So my um, part today is eminence or evidence-based medicine. And um, these are my conflict of interest. Um, so what is eminence and what is evidence? So evidence-based medicine, it is an approach to medical practice. It is well-designed and well-conducted research. Eminence is what you say to your, uh, uh, to your chief in your hospital. So um, I think this is very important because a lot of things uh, what we do is because it is in my hands and um, this is not, um, this, is, this is no evidence, this is only eminence. So I think this is, um, um, this is very, very well known, uh, the level of evidence. And I think whatever we are doing, we just have uh, to do it um, with that in your back. And what you heard yesterday about rapid recurrent research, so it is that we just pull out everything what is not um, um, evidence-based medicine. Um, this is what everybody knows, the Lancet is not suspected uh, to be an uh, orthopedic journal, so um, I think we can be very proud of it. And um, we just further on, we were just um, in another talk, we were just um, hear that again, so, but there are a lot of traditions and myths versus evidence-based uh, medicine. And Husted, uh, Henry Husted and uh, Henry Kehlet, who are the more or less inviter of um, enhanced recovery, which is not fast track. I think you just have to divide the, uh, these um, um, two, two things. Um, so, if you just look at the evidence base, what we are, um, know about shaving and depilation, there's no evidence for. Surgical foil, foil, no evidence. Space unit, no evidence. Bladder catheter, no evidence. Compressing stockings, no evidence. So, throw it away. <coughs> What's about furtronic cyan acid? It is, there is a high evidence for it. It's level 1A, so use it. What's about the wound drainage? No evidence, so throw it away. What's about the LIA? High evidence, level 1, so use it. What's about the minimal invasive incision? It is, um, this is a bit different uh, what is, so, um, at that time, if you just go to surgery as well, it is um, a bit difficult with the, um, uh, the evidence-based. But here we have four studies with level one, th uh, three with level two, and uh, 23 with level three. So there's no significant, no significant difference regarding complication rates, and all the other things, there's um, all the other things there's high evidence for. So use it, do it, change your uh, surgical procedure. So this is, in former days, I, I just took um, center pulse because it is not anymore on the market, so um, um, there, there's, there are no conflicts. So and if we just, and that is a problem, if you just look at the German um, EPRD register, we see that you just have more, uh, uh, 140,000 um, arthroplasties. But if you just look at here, we just had 200, 260,000. So they are missing 120,000, which is not in the register. So the German register is not as far as all the other registers. Even we are just doing the most, uh, in numbers, the most arthroplasties in Europe. So. Um, this is difficult. If you just look at, uh, if you just look at um, results from a register, you have to know how many from the, <coughs> how many from the arthroplasties are included over the whole country. So and in Germany, we have, it is not by law, it is coming to be by law, but at the moment, it is just um, on your own wish if you just want to uh, uh, be part of it or not. So what we are doing, how we choose the right implant? These two things are working. So, um, and the lady is not able to look inside her bones. So, what is the right one? And if we just remember to the discussions yesterday between the Zweimüller shaft and the Optimus, it is working. So, what we just have to know, and what we just have always to have in our minds, is that um, that we just have a failure of 30 percent, 13 percent of particular pathologies and the 10 years follow-up. So, and 
it is resulting in an increase of revision rates with complex surgical procedures and which are um, tremendous costs. So we have a lot of a lot of failed implants over 10 years. Even we just heard yesterday the Mayo shaft, which was fantastic. Everybody had to, uh, to do it. Or this uh, similar uh, the, the, this thing here, which broke a lot. We saw it yesterday. So it must be that we just, or it has to be that we just have more than 10 years results before we are just going further and saying, this is an implant, what we just use uh, for everybody. So this is um, what we are expecting, um, that the hip rates uh, for revision is um, more than 100%, and uh, for knee, it's six times. So what are the costs? Um, now in 2020, this is now, more or less, we have 1.6 billion US dollar for, for revision. And if we just look at the German um, guidelines, um, there's a, just a, a, a little, a, a more or less, a little base. It is every patient undergoing a primary hip replacement should fulfill minimal criteria, pain, limited range of motion, radiographic signs of osteoarthritis. Is that our basic? Is that why we uh, uh, um, decide the patient needs a, an arthroplasty or not? I think it's difficult. So if we just look at the uh, Sweden, uh, Swedish hip arthroplasty register, so what we see is, as well, of course, it's an increasing, it's an increasing number of. And if you look at it, it is over the years between male and female, it is over the years until 2016, it is more or less uh, the same uh, between the green ones are the, uh, over the uh, 74 years old and um, uh, uh, years uh, 55 years old. So this is constant uh, over the years. The number is increasing. If you just look at the approach and the implant survival, uh, <coughs> survival rate, so what we see, first of all, is now, it, of course, it is Swedish. Um, um, it is the posterior approach. The blue one is the direct lateral, white is uh, direct lateral supine uh, position, and uh, green one uh, are arthas. So what we can we see is, which I think is important, that not for, for all type of incisions, you can see um, that, the, that the blue curve, it's the cemented, and the green one for the reverse uh, uh, hybrid is, uh, uh, shows the best results. If you just look only at the posterior, it's the uncemented, which has the best um, uh, survival rate. And if you just look at the anterolateral only, it is the GRU one, uh, so the hybrid, or the re reverse hybrid. So it seems to be that the approach is influencing the survival rate. So do we have any effect of femoral head size? Yes, we have here. Of course, this is only a short period. But we see that <coughs> um, the dual mobility, which is used in French a lot, um, has the best survival rates um, in uh, comparison to the 22 or 28. Of course, unfortunately, we just uh, use the 32 or 36, so there are no data. And if we just look cemented at versus uh, cementless and the bearings, so what we see is um, these are, um, so over the years, so um, you see these are the numbers. Um, so the, the all cemented, it goes a bit down, and the, and the uncemented goes up. And here you see what is the most common um, uh, bearings. And you see, uh, and I was surprised, that it is still, um, it is still metal on poly, a non-cross-linked, um, and what is now coming over to, to, until to 2016, it is metal on poly with cross-linked. But it's still metal. I thought it is ceramic and um, ceramic and um, uh, poly, but no, it's still it is still metal on poly. And then you, um, this is not not so surprising. If you just see that is what we know. Um, it doesn't matter which kind of um, uh, which kind of arthroplasty you use. If you are, use cemented or or a, uh, a hybrid, it is the older the patients are the better the survival rate is. So what is over 10 years? If you just look, if you just look at it, um, 
now, so until 2016. So what you see is over all implants that the survival rate is over all implants it is um, it is um, about um, uh, 93 percent. But if you just look at it for difference, you see, for example, that um, by in all uncemented <coughs> all uncemented implants that for reoperation you just have um, the red curve in two th until 2001, and you see how much it is better uh, in 2011. So we just do a progress even with the implants. And what we see if you just do the revisions is that the loosening osteolysis goes down. The reason for, for revision goes down. For, um, here you see this was nearly 80% was the reason for, for revision in 2001. And in 2016, it was um, 60%. What was coming up was the infection. And for the multiple revisions, it is the infection is growing and growing and growing. Well, we just have to think about it. Why is that? What, what are we doing in the wrong way? Then, of course, we can look at different implants. You can see, OK, we have here the Spotono. You see, after 18 years, it's about over 80%. And then, in comparison, for example, you just have the Durum. OK, here it was after eight years, and then it was gone from the market. So you see this. So you can see and can look really at the, uh, at the single implant and see what are the results. And um, of course, this is patient age-related implant. This is what I just showed before. If the patient is very young, um, it is, uh, the survival rate is shorter because it is used more. Um, and if you just use it as the 75 years old, so then it's, um, the, the survival rate is uh, much longer. And this is, I think, um, but we just have to look at it and to think about it. Should we publish? These are all the hospitals in Sweden who are doing arthroplasty. And if you are here or here with your results, it is by law, then you are kicked out. So this is really difficult, and we just have that in our mind. But if you just look at it at the survival rate of implants, then we just have to have in our mind um, how are your results? Are you really good enough for that? I think we have that discussion in Germany as well. So what can we say um, in the summary of the register data 2018? We have an increase of cementless um, hips, um, an increase of reverse hips. We have an increase of metal on high cross-linked PE bearings. The cement socket uh, has a longer survival rate than the cementless. Um, the cemented stem with higher survival rate than the cementless. The uh, hydroxyapatic coatings do not have a higher, higher um, survival rate. And relevant different implant survival rate among various designs. And the prosthesis lifetime, it seems to be is dependent on inserting techniques, not only on the surgeon. So if you just look what is the summary of evidence, this is what I showed you is no evidence, no evidence, no evidence, no evidence. High evidence for that. For the short stem, we, we can't answer it at the moment, uh, as we heard yesterday. And um, so this is what we, have, what we just can do, uh, what we just can see um, over the over, over over our evidence. So this we have to have in our mind when we just make a decision which implant we use for the patient. And just as a take-home message, I think if you just want to be on the right side, um, if your results are published, then proper planning and preparation prevents poor performance. And uh, uh, this is Antonio Raimondi, he's an, a neurosurgeon. And he said, heavy surgeons are better surgeons. I don't like the ups uh, or the oops. I prefer the arms. So um, thank you uh, to Thomas Kaltais, uh, Mr. Wunderlich, and Mr. Goldhofer. This is what I just used you for the rest of the weekend. This is what are your plans for today? Nothing. And the, uh, but this is what you just have told me yesterday. Yeah, but he couldn't finish uh, doing nothing. So this is, I just want to invite you, I just use it. Uh, to invite you um, to come to Baden-Baden in 2019 for three days. 
And uh, I just want to use to thank you um, uh, again, Joachim, uh, with a nice collaboration um, over the Rhine River and with Michael Schneider, Philipp Rebein and Philipp Kutzner for the cooperation in previous and in future times. Thanks a lot.